Hello, everybody. I'm Mark, Mark Coleman, and this is... Hi, I'm, I'm Nick. And we welcome you very warmly to uh, what used to be a workshop at the Christian Climate Action Conference in January 2022, held in Birmingham, uh, but we're now recording so others can hear it. It's a workshop on courage, which was titled, is titled, Search for the Hero Inside Yourself. Very clever title we thought. Um, so we're getting ready for the Just Stop Oil campaign, a campaign of civil disobedience, and so we thought that a workshop which shared some of our insights and stories from our experiences would be helpful in helping us reflect on courage and what might help us step up at this time. Um, so I'm going to, we're going to interview each other in a way and uh, uh, talk about the theme of courage. Um, so who's going to start, Nick, you or me? Um, you want to ask the first question? All right, then I shall ask you, Nick, what, uh, what, 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 what's given you courage or what, what got you going in this field? Um, so I, my sort of wake up moment, um, going into doing activism was, um, I say it was a 2008 financial crisis. And yeah, just realizing how corrupt things really were in the world. And I started doing a bit of um, clicktivism, as I call it. Um, and I gradually got into doing peace activism through friends. Um, and I eventually arrived at doing an arrestable action at a nuclear base and I remember the fear and I remember struggling to stop my body shaking um, and and a part of me there's a kind of a voice in me that's more compliant sort of saying what are you doing you're being told to move why aren't you moving um, and I yeah I, I realized through that experience and, and repeating that kind of action that you can actually build courage. Um, and in 2018, I shifted my focus more to climate activism when Extinction Rebellion started. And I started doing um, arrestable actions with CCA and XR. Um, and that's led to me recently doing Insulate Britain and go, uh, going to prison very briefly. Um, how about you, Mark? Well, I don't think I'm a very courageous person, really, and that's why I was uh, attracted to this idea of looking at it. Uh, I'm not even sure if courage is a real thing, it's, but it's certainly a, a real, a useful idea. It could be a bit macho, and that's no good for us here. Um, I like the idea of courage, and I think the etymology of the word is heart, French cœur, something about that. That's a, that's a good one. Courage isn't just the head, it's something from the heart. Um, or maybe it's, uh, you know how in the Gospels, when Jesus uh, weeps or when Jesus is deeply troubled, the, doesn't the word mean uh, something about bowels and deep in the innards of you? So I think courage comes from deep within. Um, yeah, but my courage came slowly. And I think there were many times when I, I lost courage or went, kept myself busy and avoided the opportunity to step up and uh, be braver. Uh, I remember several, maybe 10, 15 years ago, going to a Greenbelt conference and uh, there was a peace activist speaking, a plowshares person, and I felt very called to it, but I sort of somehow managed to just distract myself. Um, but I, I, when I saw Rowan Williams writing a letter to The Guardian with lots of other people about the time Extinction Rebellion started, I was thrilled that something was happening where I could be participating physically and with all my being, um, and then getting involved in Christian climate action and Extinction Rebellion, and then recently Insulate Britain has been a great sort of confirmation really of uh, finding courage and then stepping up to the next stage. And it's it's been a very blessed time. So I'm, I'm grateful to be where I am. Um, so Nick, what, what gives you courage personally um so firstly i think i would say 
I try to practice not caring what people think about me. I may be forced to do that a bit at school anyway, so I got used to it. Um, and I think as an adult, I try to confront my fears um, by trying new things, even if people around me are skeptical. That could be both um, creative things or it could be a decision of conscience even. Um, and I think, I think there's a prophetic calling to recognize, especially as Christians. Um, so doing something not in line with the herd, I think sometimes that, that just has to be done um, in order to shift the, the herd in a new direction. Um, and you might face criticism for that, even if you're right. Um, and you might find out that you're wrong as well. And you face the criticism and the, the potential humiliation of getting it wrong. Um, and often you're just, you're at least trying to get to the next thing, even if you were wrong. So sometimes you just have to kind of go on that path. Um, and I also try daring to trust. I think that's really important. It's important in society anyway. Um, and I think things usually go better than you think. So there isn't really the, re the reason to fear um, necessarily in the first place. Um, quite often, if you do an arrestable action, you know, the charges get dropped. Um, you don't, don't even get to court or you, you think you're going to a Crown Court, you go to a Magistrate's Court instead. Um, or maybe the worst case scenario for you does happen. Maybe it's going to prison, maybe it's for longer than you thought you would. I think you have to still try and trust that the people around you will step up and support you um, and try to give you everything that you need. And I think also you have to dare to trust, let's say it's a prison scenario, you need to dare to trust the staff in the prison and the prisoners. Um, and again, in terms of things not being as bad as you think, it's very unlikely that you'd face violence in prison as an activist, for example. Um, and if you do, like whatever you do, if you do have a difficult time, I think we tend to forget how resilient we are. So I actually had quite a rubbish time in prison and I'm, I'm okay. Um, and lastly, I think stepping out, doing something fun and meaningful with others and risking adversity, that's one of the best journeys you can go on. Um, and I think the key is to not, not just assume that other people don't face fear that, that try these things or that they have perfect circumstances. Um, yeah. How about you, Mark? That's uh, very good what you said. I, I, I like this thought that it's it may not be as bad as you think and uh, aware of all the almost an industry of fear creation and uh, anxiety and planning too much. And uh, I, I, anyway, yes, I'm a fear certainly has got me at many times, but um, and that's often when I've ended up as an individual. I've thought it's all about me and what I can do. And and but when we're a, when we're a we, not an I, the world looks much better, much more full of possibilities. Uh, and I'm sure that's the idea of what church should be. And and I've experienced church or community as a place of blessings and seeing the possibilities and the power of people uh, working together. And my own inadequacies more than made up for by other people's gifts and. So yes, uh, overcoming fear and actually just sensing that it's it's a place where one can feel trust and, and risk to trust, dare to dare to love. Um, so yeah, and the only other thing I think I'd share is uh, uh, I'm grateful that we we use in Christian language this idea of gift. You know, we have gifts, yes, but everything's a gift. Life is a gift. Um, and for me, when I've realised that I'm not going to live forever, and so I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease uh seven or eight years ago um which was a bit of a shock at first so i did know i was not going to live forever but it sort of brings it home to you when you get something like that um but there's a sort of liberation when you realize that 
time is limited and uh, every moment matters uh, and th this can make life rich with opportunity so I try to be uh, inspired by that and have felt that and our Christian tradition is so full of helpful things you know the, the holy communion the idea of uh, well you can't describe no you know what I mean the the richness of our metaphors and practices and stories and gospels and other texts and so much there so that that continues to inspire me and, and I pray resources me but but also I, I'm God has given me all sorts of helpful people who have encouraged me along the way um, people who are sometimes happier than me at that point to stand up and not be in the herd uh, people who uh, had courage people who would had more insight and different sexualities or different perspectives or different ethnic backgrounds or cultures so you know those sorts of broadening moments all help um, um, so that's it so fear is is something to be certainly pushed aside um, Nick what would you say about your faith and the church and courage um, so I definitely take inspiration from past saints. So my my confirmation saint um, was um, Maximilian Kolb, um, and he was he was martyred in a Nazi concentration camp. Um, and I remember the the story of him being read to me at a very young age, along with um, other radical saints, um, and. Yeah, it was just such a simple example um, that I've, I've um, yeah, that's been there for me in my life. Um, and also another specific example was going to hear Sister Megan Rice talk in Birmingham about five years ago. Um, she's passed away now. Um, and she, um, she'd just been let out of prison in America. She was in prison for two and a half years and she had broken into a um, secure nuclear facility in the States. Um, and she'd, um, it sounds quite bizarre, she bottled her own blood and sprayed it on the walls. This is really dramatic action. Um, sort of trying to, trying to highlight the um, murderous nature of nuclear weapons. Um, and she did that in her early eighties. And I just found the story and meeting her absolutely captivating. And I just thought this, this, is, this is an example of a, a, what a Christian should be to me. Um, I'm also very inspired by um, Jed Myers and his political theology. Um, there's no time to go into detail on that, but I would recommend looking him up. Um, do, you, do you want to say any more about... Um, your faith and courage Mark. not not much ched myers uh yes binding the strong man and there's there's uh, something about a mountain isn't there there's some great books on discipleship um yes uh not a lot but i guess i jesus at the, the the center of it but then um yes these sort of contemporary saints and martin luther king and uh, I remember reading about Gandhi and, and being excited about these things, but but I guess I always I, I even had the ho horror, horrible privilege of going to Auschwitz as well. Um, but and you look at these things and think, well, surely that could never happen again. And then you begin to see some of the the structures of our society begin to <clears throat> slip away, and our ability to not face horrible uh, truths like. The climate collapsing uh, and not act on it so uh, there is great evil potentially around so sacrificial love is is what inspires me which is found in all sorts of christian saints and 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 other saints all over the place and i am grateful for that um i think there's one more question for you nick isn't there about spirituality and courage is anything else you've got there um <clears throat> yeah um so for me, a belief in the Eucharist is really important. Um, and I was in my 20s, I remember being particularly impacted by 
um, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin and the way he talks about his um, sort of Eucharistic vision of humanity and all things kind of joined into God as one. Um, so I think, yeah, to me, that's a, that's a beautiful vision. And if, if life was just about being an individual, then I don't know if I'd find the courage to um, try and act for the, the universal care of others. Um, so yeah, for, for me, that's, I try to keep that at the center of my uh, spirituality. Brilliant. Um, yeah, amen to all that. Um, I, I don't know if I can share now something about my experience of Insulate Britain and being part of the Christian, a Christian group there within it, Christian Climate Action. Please uh, do. It, it was a, we were in, 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 a, in a team of uh, 16 or so people um, and uh, some of us were Christian Climate Action members and some more experienced than me in terms of nonviolent civil resistant action. Um, and it was lovely, the different levels of community, the, the Christian community, the wider community, uh, and how we all enriched and gave something to each other. But certainly as Christians, we occasionally celebrated the Eucharist uh, where we could. Uh, we regularly would say our prayers, usually the a bit of the Anglican office uh, led uh, well, by one of us and shared uh, with, with a wider group often. Uh, before going to do our actions uh, once wonderfully in a, in a forest in a near a national trust property before we went on to a motorway and, and and somebody sang with a beautiful voice oh for the wings of a dove at sort of early in the morning um, saying the psalms and, and sharing those with others um, and the psalms being always feeling like the words have been chosen for that moment you know that sort of sense of how prayer often feels like that. Um, so just spirit and action and love and community is uh, very special when it all comes together. Um, okay, that's enough from us at the moment. But, uh, and at this point, Nick, this is where we ask people to do an exercise. Do you think we should sort of give the people at home a chance to do this? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what it is, and, and maybe you'll want to do this. I, I, we do hope you do. Um, so why don't you think for a moment, uh, look a bit deeper into yourself and uh, maybe write it down. If there's someone else with you watching this or you can share it with, that's even better. The question would be, think about a time when you felt courageous. Describe it. Don't analyze it too much, but just remember it and, and feel it. Relive it. Think about a time when you felt courageous. That's the first question. The second one would be, what do you think helps you find your courage? Uh, what do you think helps you find your courage or step up or step forward? Uh, so just reflect on that. Um, and sadly, we, we're not gonna hear your feedback, at least not immediately. Um, we're now gonna tell you a bit about Just Stop Oil and uh, uh, what's happening with this campaign and we'd, we'd love you to be part of it. Um, this is just a very quick summary and then at the end Nick will tell you how we can how you can find out more. Uh, so I'll, I'll start with the, the the priorities of the campaign, Just Stop Oil. Um, it's all about the UK government planning to open up a new oil field, a Cambo oil field in the North Sea. It's a massive uh, project. Um, a line was crossed, we feel, at COP26. It was absolutely clear that we can't go on digging up fossil fuels at this point in history. If we do that, we're absolutely going over two degrees centigrade, and we absolutely are condemning billions of people to unthinkable suffering. And we don't think that is on. That's not going to happen. So that's our first demand to cancel the plans for opening up this new oil field and no new licenses granted for fossil fuel exploration of any sort. So no oil, no gas and no coal. So that's our focus. The second demand is that the government supports those oil workers to get out of the jobs they do, get out of destroying the economy, get out of destroying their kids' future and move into renewable energy. 
proper useful jobs with full retraining programs because that's what we need the world needs and that's what 80 percent of them want because it's not you can imagine not a great job to be involved in fossil fuel extraction and rates of depression and mental, mental illness are massively high we understand so this demand is also about creating hundreds of, of thousands of new jobs in wind and solar energy and getting the north sea oil guys into them so that's the campaign focus and how are we going to do it uh, nick will tell you so a bit more on the nitty-gritty of the campaign uh, we, we were debating some of the details earlier so if we've got any of them wrong um you can check in again there's another talk that's coming up soon um so there's a really fast sign up rate that's the that's the great news um so there's over 260 sign ups so far um we're looking to recruit um 500 plus adults and a thousand plus students um as a bare minimum and there's an aim of putting on about uh, 20 talks a week um that will happen in strategic locations and there's a there's a plan for hundreds of talks at universities um so it's I think more than half the workload is this huge mobilization effort um, and they've been applying a bit of uh, social science research and how that's done um, so yeah it's a case of um, identifying locations uh, booking a venue putting on a talk and then before the in the run-up to the talk um, people are delivering um, about five thousand leaflets to local houses by a leaflet to the door, you don't just post it. Um, and that will normally return a certain number of people to a talk. And then within the talk, you'll get, you know, one, two, <clears throat> three people signing up. And if you do that in enough places, then hopefully we'll get the numbers. Um, and so once you've been to a talk, you then, uh, there's currently three options. Um, so number one is you sign up to varying levels of arrestable action. Um, number two is the youth swarm. And that's basically the same as number one, as I understand it, but it's just a kind of a, a separate space for youth. Um, and then number three, we think this is still a thing where you can sign up to do NVDA training with no commitment. And then you decide at the end of the training what you do or don't want to do. Um, actions apparently range from uh, low stakes to very high stakes. Um, we don't know what they are yet. I think the designs are being considered and worked out. <clears throat> the aim is to disrupt key fossil fuel infrastructure. So presumably things like oil refineries, petrol stations, etc. And I think it will involve some blocking of roads like motorways um, sort of near to those locations to disrupt them. But it's uh, not, as I understand it, anything like Insulate Britain, where blocking motorways was the, the sort of the key tactic. Um, there are other groups looking to do things concurrently, like uh, Stop Drax and Stop HS2. Um, there's also an international element being developed, which is really exciting. So we should see some other countries running campaigns alongside Just Stop Oil, or they will just go when they're ready. Um, <clears throat> there's not going to be any uh, patriotic messaging like there was in Insulate Britain, as much as I thought that was really fun myself. Um, so apparently it's been quite a barrier to mo the mobilization of people that um, might have already signed up for something like that. Um, and <clears throat> the aim is to build a, they're calling it a civil resistance community. So the aim is to make sure everyone is fully supported, especially if um, they're doing high risk stuff or going to prison. So we want, we don't want any sort of barriers to entry. Um, <clears throat> The organizational structure is similar to Insulate Britain. Um, I call that a sort of friendly hierarchy. Um, so it, it basically stops 
it's basically a small team that make final decisions on things um, and it stops the decision making process being kind of clogged up by having too much consensus. Um, I think we've seen that that was actually very effective in Insulate Britain. Um, yeah, so there's a board of about six people. There's also um, a small strategy group. And then everyone else is in uh, teams of 20 people with um, two leaders. Um, and those, are, those are the groups that take action. Um, a possible go date is the 22nd of March. Um, <clears throat> what we'll do is um, in the video description, we're going to put uh, various links to things. Um, so the big thing we want to tell you at this point is that um, this video is just a taster and we'd like you to come to another talk and it's called Our Responsibilities at This Time. Um, so we've got Roger Hallam coming to speak and you'll hear more about the Just Stop Oil campaign. Um, that's on Thursday the 3rd of February at uh, 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Um, we'll also have uh, testimonies from uh, CCA members um, who've already signed up to Just Stop Oil and there'll be breakout rooms and a chance to ask questions. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, look in the video description, you'll find the uh, Zoom registration link for that call. Um, you can, if you can't make that date, you can alternatively attend the same talk at 4 p.m. every Sunday. Um, we'll put the link to that in the uh, video description as well. Um, if you've heard enough now and you're ready to sign up straight away, then look for the Action Network link in the description as well. Um, <clears throat> if you'd like to support in another way, then please do get in touch. So you can email, uh, it's ring2021 at protonmail.com. Um, we'll also put that in the video description. Um, so there's, there's lots of different jobs. There's leafleting, there's back office work, logistics, all sorts of things you can sign up for. Um, and please also donate. So we're going to leave lots of money. Um, they're asking that people try and donate um, a thousand pounds at a time if possible. Um, obviously, whatever you can afford. So the, the approximate costs of doing one um, outing, like paying for accommodation and transport and so on, is, is usually around about a thousand pounds. Um, so we'll put a donate link in the video description as well. Um, yeah, that's it. That's right, Nick. And uh, the only thing I'd add is uh, there are probably local talks as well near you. If you're a physical talk with a real person, I'm organising one at the moment off leaf leafleting now after I've recorded this. Um, and the other great thing about the, the proper longer talk is that it explains the social science, physical science and then social science. And so uh, it helped me understand the, the rationale for a focus campaign and why there's a good chance of it succeeding. And I, I was keen to move to put my energies into something which has a, a, a chance of making change. Um, so we, we said this was about courage. I don't know if the session was, well, we, we spoke a bit about courage, but really we're asking you to be part of this campaign. And the courage emerges, I think, in community and by the grace of God. And uh, together, we are certainly strong and able to do great things. So uh, please do come to the talk and thank you for listening to us. So bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye. Bye-bye.